first, we want to give away a t-shirt. Yes, we do. We forgot to in our last video, so we did it on our stories. Not a lot of people saw it, so in this video, we want to give away a free t-shirt. Um, what do you want them to comment? Comment... like mine's very loud yeah because blakely messed it up Is hello it yeah okay. hello talk normal how are you doing today great great amazing are you ready i think so <laughs> today we're using blakely's ipad yes why is that oh yours is upstairs mine's upstairs okay <laughs> I gotta learn all these pads. Perfect. That was perfect. Thanks. Okay. Um Welcome back to Tech Tuesday. Yes, Tech Tuesday. Even Number three. It's Sunday. Yes, we record these early. Yeah, but I gotta it takes me a long time to put them together. Because <laughs> I'm new to this. Yeah. Um first we want to give away a t-shirt. Yes, we do. We forgot to in our last video, so we did it on our stories. Not a lot of people saw it. So in this video, we want to give away a free t-shirt. Um, what do you want them to comment? Comment. Um, you don't seem prepared. I'm not prepared. <laughs> comment below brny okay good one yeah so you gotta like the video subscribe to our channel i got it we're gonna check the subscriptions make sure you're subscribed to the channel yes and then comment in the video brny right yep and then we'll hit you up um if there's only one person who does it that person wins a free t-shirt yep um what t-shirt should we send because we have a t-shirt like yours it's a flag yeah mine that's a flag or we have you're not wearing it but mm -mm. Just a plain, it says rigid axle across the front. Yeah, rigid axle across the front, and then it has our ring gear logo in the back. Yeah. Um, this one is a T, is a... And flag on the sleeve. That's right. Like yours. That one has a flag on the front, um, and then the back is the ring gear logo. Correct. Then we have them in black and white. I know a lot of our customers like black because... I'm oh, sorry. Because they get their shit all dirty all the time, working on their cars. Yes. So... We do have black and white, um, so comment BRNY. Comment BRNY. And, and leave us a way to get in contact with you, either um, Instagram or an email. Yeah, so I, uh, on, our, um, on our last podcast that with Andrew, um, when we put that on the story... Um, the guy commented and then I replied to the comment, let him know to email us at support at rigid axle with an address and uh, t t-shirt size. Perfect. And then uh, Andrew will set that all up and then Daryl will get it out as soon as the customer gets back to us. Okay, awesome. I haven't, I haven't seen if he's replied or not. But anyway, Tech Tuesday. Tech Tuesday. Are you ready? Yeah. How many questions we have? I've got three for you. Okay. We'll see how long I can ramble about them. Not very long today, but they are some good ones. Good. Okay, first question is, what differential is in my vehicle? Yeah, so this is kind of hard for us to help with that, obviously, um, without seeing your vehicle. I mean, it always goes back to how we talked about in our previous videos, getting as much info from you guys as possible from the customer images. Like if you could just send us an image of the rear cover or, you know, provide a year make and model images of the rear cover, we can help. Um, but like to find out what you have, the, the issue is that like, um, the GM seven and a half and the GM eight and a half, 
they came in the same vehicles um depending on like the trim or like what series of that year make model you purchased Mm -hmm. depending on the engine size depending on a lot of different variables gm might have put a seven and a half in something with a you know a a v6 in it but the v8 vehicle might have come with the eight and a half so when you're looking at our listings for a seven and a half posi package and it says um you know a whatever 1993 s10 you might go to the eight and a half um posi package as well and that 1993 s10 might be in there because don't quote me on this but i know s10s did come with a seven and a half and an eight and a half depending on whatever i don't don't know exactly engine size or um just the package that each vehicle came with um some vehicles come with multiple differentials so it's up to the customer to verify what they have in their vehicle before they purchase obviously Mm -hmm. um a tool that i use like literally on a daily basis and i know andrew does too um randy's worldwide if you go to randysworldwide.com um they have a really good the best in the industry year make model um you punch in your year make model and then four wheel drive or two wheel drive. It's right on their homepage. And then you click search and then it'll pop up and show you exactly what differentials could be in that vehicle. So if you're looking for the front, <clears throat> you type in that 1993 Chevy S10 um, four wheel drive and it'll pop up and show you what differentials could possibly be in the front and what differentials could possibly be in the rear. So it gives you like, you know, the seven and a half and the eight and a half are going to come up for the rear. Now you have to go figure out, okay, do I have the seven and a half or do I have the eight and a half? At least you've narrowed it down to, I have, you know, there's a possibility I have these two rear ends of my truck. Mm -hmm. Um, so now that you have those two, you need to go get under the vehicle and look at, um, the rear cover is usually the easiest way to do it. If you're just looking superficial, like at, at the actual rear end, Um, each cover is kind of shaped different. Um, both of them have 10 bolts, so that won't help you, but the shape of the cover will be different between the seven and a half and the eight and a half. So, um, randysworldwide.com use their year make model search and it'll populate whatever possible, um, rear ends or front ends came in that vehicle. So that'll give you a good idea. And then you can go back to our, our website and get, you know, the posi package that you know, okay, I just verified I do have a seven and a half. Um, and then, you know, you can look at all of our seven and a half models. From there, you got to figure out if you have a 28 spline, 30 spline, or like the seven and a half has a 26 spline or a 28 spline, depending on the years. And some there's some overlap there too. So that's another, sometimes you just got to pull the axles out and count the splines to figure out what you actually have. Um, okay. But yeah, that's what me and Andrew use. And I honestly, I know like all the other um, serious vendors out there use that Randy's Worldwide, you know, to figure that out as well, because um, it's just they did a really good job with it and it's there free for everybody to use. So um, it's probably the best place to go check, you know, what what possibilities you have in each year making model. Awesome. All right. Next question is, do I need a BRNY case protector for my rebuild? Okay. Yeah. So this is a transfer case question that we get a lot. Um, our packages include a BRNY if the customer wants, Mm -hmm. but with our rebuilds, it's not necessary. Um, and sometimes I'd say about 10% of the time, the BRNY doesn't even really fit with our case halves. Um, the case halves that we sell are reinforced around the pump area. The whole reason that we sell our rebuilds is be or that we sell the case halves that we do is because they don't require a BRNY because there's added aluminum um, material around the pump area to prevent the you know the pump in a 261, 263, 246, 149. Those pumps have wiggle room in the case from the factory, and so the issue is that as time goes on, that pump just beats the shit out of the case and then at some point 
the pump eats through the case now there's a hole and fluid leaks out mm -hmm. so if you don't catch that um, you could run the transfer case dry burn everything up inside and not really know why so then what customers do they'll pull the transfer case they'll pull that case half off they'll see the hole there and then realize oh the case half you know took a shit because the pump ate through it at some point so that's what a brny is it's a it's a um it's a brass plate that has tabs bent up that protect the case, the pump sits on top of it and so the pump beats up against the brass plate instead of the stock case half so like in in a stock scenario where you're not going to really rebuild anything you're just looking to prevent that from happening to your stock case then a brny is a good idea and we do sell them we have we always have hundreds of them on our shelves because people buy the shit out of them yeah um they're cheap it's an easy pull the case off it's a very simple put that you know pull the pump out or uh i don't even think you have to pull the pump you just put the the brny in the case half put the case half back on and then you're protected from that happening um but the case halves that we sell are uh like I said, reinforce with more material around the pump so that the pump, we've never had a, a pump eat through our case half. And so, be, and like I said before, because there's so much material added around the pump, there's less slop for the pump to move. And um, because of that, the, BR, the thickness of the BRNY might not even fit between a case half and the pump. So it's like, I don't know the machining process or the, um, the casting some, sometimes the BRNY doesn't fit. I'd say 90% of the time the BRNY fits fine. And so we do offer it as a, as a add on or whatever in our packages. If, if, if you're a customer and you've, and you've shopped 261, 263 rebuild kits, you know, we, we sell a base kit and then there is an option. Do you want to add a BRNY to this or not? Yeah. And then we specify that in the listing as well. Like our case half doesn't require a BRNY, but if you want that like over protection, um, then you could try to put a BRNY in it. It's just not a guarantee that it's going to fit. Like I said, 90% of the time it does 10% it doesn't. And the BRNYs are so cheap. You just leave it out. If it doesn't fit, you know, that that, that should give you peace of mind too, knowing that that BRNY doesn't even fit. So there's really no way for that pump to rock back and forth in the case half anyway, cause it's so, it's such a tight fit. So like I said, we've never literally never had a case half come back to us. Like in the five years that we've been selling these case halves, mm -hmm. we've never had a case half come back to us because the pump ate through it. So like that should go out the window. Like a lot of people, don't want to rebuild their transfer case again in a hundred thousand miles because the pump ate through it. So yeah. just use one of our case halves. Don't, don't reuse the stock one because there's not a hole in it with a BRNY. Just put a, put a new case half in the back of it that you know is not gonna have any issues for the life of the vehicle. So, um, that's usually, you know, the gist of what I tell customers when they, when they ask, if they should or shouldn't order a BRNY, I would say, no, you don't need it. But if it's going to help, like, cause a lot of the forums say you have to have a BRNY so that you're protected. Yeah. So if you're one of those guys that wants to listen to the forum and that'll help you sleep at night, then by all means get the BRNY. It's, it's cheap. It's not a big deal to use it or not, but I'm just, like I said, we've never had an issue with the case half coming back that the pump has actually eaten through it. So I know you won't have an issue either. So awesome. Okay. Last question is, um, what is the difference between a 410 and a 411 ring and pinion? Yeah, we get this a lot with customers who don't understand what the ratio actually is. Um, the ratio is oh. the, um, it's the ring gear teeth divided by the pinion teeth. So if, the ring gear has 40 teeth on it and the pinion has 10 teeth on it. You're going to get a 410. Sometimes the, I don't know the exact, sometimes the 
ring gear might have 41 teeth or 39 teeth and the pinion has whatever that math is um, to get a 411 where it's just a rounding air. That's all it is. It's the same ring gear. You don't get more performance out of a 411 than a 410. It's the exact same gear. Um, sometimes the, like in four wheel drive guys, sometimes the front diff will come in a 410 and then the rear gear will come in a 411 and they'll be like, Oh no, I can't do that because they're different ratios. Um, but a 410, 411, it's the exact same. That's why we phrase it the way we do on our site because a lot of customers, forum customers who are getting shitty information from people who don't know ring and pinions, they'll say, you're only offering a 410, but I'm looking, I want a 411 because that's better than 410. And it's like, no, it's the exact same gear. It's a rounding air. Like sometimes the ring gear tooth divided by the pinion tooth is, um, 4.135, 4 4.15. Like it's just a rounding to either. It's going to be a 4.11 or a 4.10. You just round to that number. So, mm. um, a 373, might be a 3.7273 you know what i mean so like 3.727 is gonna round up to a 373 right yeah so if you go to our site and you're shopping for ring and pinions you'll notice you know we have 355s 373s 392s and then we have a 410 slash a 411 it's the exact same gear ratio if you're looking for a 411 that's what you select if you're looking for a 410 that's what you select it's the exact same thing so don't get caught up in, you know, the forum bull crap of, no, you should get a 411. Don't, don't get a 410. That's stupid. It makes no sense. But an, uh, off on a tangent, um, that's a good, that's another good tech thing is for the four wheel drive guys, you have to put the same ratio ring and pinion in the front as you do the rear. So if it's a 410 in the front and a 411 in the rear, same thing, not a big deal, right? But if you have a three seven, if you're like re gearing, if you have a Jeep and it comes factory with a four tens, the reason why you have to buy a front ring and pinion and a rear ring and pinion is because you can't leave four tens in the front, but then switch to a four eighty eight in the rear. What happens is they spin at different rates, and it's you know when the vehicle starts moving, it'll bind because they're not moving at the same rate. So we've actually had a custom. We had a customer who did that, I want to say like three or four years ago. It was a long time ago. I think he was, a, I think he had like a Bronco or something. He bought a um, Ford nine inch rear ring and pinion from us and he had a four wheel drive set up in his Bronco. Um, and he bought something like 456 or 488s and the fronts had like 373s in it or something. And so he, it sucks because he wasn't doing the work himself. He took it to a mechanic. The mechanic put which obviously the mechanic should be telling these people right don't yes. waste their time if but maybe the mechanic didn't know that the ratio was different or i don't know anyway he 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 paid the mechanic to do the work on the rear end um he put a new 488 or 456 or something like that in it they got it they put it down off the lift he was going to go drive it away and the truck wouldn't move so he was pissed at us because we sold him the wrong ratio. But A, nobody told us that it was a four-wheel drive application. Nobody told us that there was, he was buying a different ratio than what was in the front. You know, so that's something that people need to pay attention to. I know like a lot of people don't know differential stuff, which is totally fine. That's what we're here for. Yeah. Um, but all of like, it always goes back to as much information as you can give us about your vehicle, the better off you are, even if you feel like it's redundant or not applicable in a four wheel drive scenario, there's a differential up front, there's a differential in the rear and you have to match the ratios or the truck won't move. So, um, I honestly don't remember what the question was at this point. Oh, the four ten and a four eleven. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I get off on tangents, but no, I think that was <clears throat> great information. Yeah. So, um, that's why we offer, you know, for the four wheel drive guys, if you are re-gearing to a different ratio, cause you're a Jeep customer or an off-roader or something lifted truck guy, you got to do the front and the rear. That's why we have front and rear packages. 
if you're changing the ratio. If you're not, if you just if you have four tens in your truck and you blew the rear end up doing whatever, um, then yeah, you just change it to a four ten or a four eleven in the rear. Same gear, doesn't matter. Um, but you got to match them within. You know, you can't like I said, you can't put a three ninety two in the front and then a four ten in the back. You're gonna eat parts. Yeah. So make sure the ratios are the exact same within a rounding air and and you're good to go i know a lot of like dana um uh, what's the dana gear that has a weird they have some really weird numbers just because the rounding airs um i think they have like instead of 355s they run a lot of 354s um which no other manufacturers do um I think there's a 390 three I don't I don't remember now but there's some weird I remember looking f- through the Dana catalog and Dana has a lot of weird one-off ratios just because that's all it is is the ring gear teeth divided by the pinion teeth mm-hmm. and that gives you that ratio the ratio between the two so um yeah just make sure you if you're looking to change the ratio make sure you know what you have that you're pulling out of the vehicle, count the ring gear, count the pinion, divide them, make sure, okay, yeah, I do have a 373. I do want a little bit more performance or I am putting bigger tires on, so let's move up to a, a whatever, a 410, 456, something like that. Um, and make sure that you're doing it both front and rear. And uh, like I said, if, if you're a four wheel drive guy and, and you're, you've only hurt the front or only hurt the rear, you can obviously put the exact same ratio in and you're good to go. You don't need to worry about anything after that. Awesome. Yep. We have any other questions? Just three, right? That's it. Cool. Quick tech Tuesday video. Quick tech Tuesday. All right. I don't know how long these should be tech Tuesdays. Me neither. I mean, I figure they need to be kind of short. Yes. Just- quick our saturday podcast is usually an hour plus yeah which if people want to listen to us ramble just about normal day-to-day stuff that's the one to watch but tech tuesday yeah, i feel like 10 to 15 minutes is a good easy to watch video of random questions that we get all the time yeah agreed cool awesome well oh. if you make sure to uh win that free t-shirt yes make sure to like comment we have a ton of them at the shop, so we're trying to give, you know, we love people. We love seeing people with our shirts on. Yep. Repping our logo. That's cool. Having their stickers on their vehicles. That's really cool for us. Yeah. You know, what's funny is remember that TikTok we watched, I don't know, a couple years ago. <laughs> yes. We were just sitting watching TikTok together. I think it was like a Saturday morning. And uh, one of the TikToks that she came by was um, a wife was upset because her husband's truck was always broke down. Yeah, she had to go rescue him. That's right. He was broke down on the side of the freeway. And she's like, oh, here I go again. Just going to get, you know, my husband. Because this stupid truck is broken down. Yep. And she pulls up to the broken truck off the side of the freeway. And there's rigid axle on the back. So we commented like, but how's that transfer case holding up? And they were like, <laughs> oh, transfer case is great. So I don't know why they were broken down off the side of the road. But it was pretty funny. Cause we were just sitting there watching. It was like the first time that we actually, actu- that we have actually seen our brand like what out in the public or it was just well, so yeah, weird. Well, yeah, especially on TikTok like that. Yeah. True. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Yeah. So, so if you guys were trying to give away as many t-shirts as possible. Yep. So, um, you know, go comment on the video, subscribe, like it, share it out. We really yeah. appreciate that. That helps us a ton and we'll keep doing this, um, you know, provide as much content and value as we can yep cool sounds good all right cool see you next week thank you bye